Hi, this is JJ at CCBC. In this video, we'll talk about audio. The specific topics we'll focus on include the different properties of sound, as well as some of the different sound file formats we'll be working with this semester. So to begin with, what is sound exactly? I like this old photo because it tries to visually represent sound. Sound is just waves of pressure. So for example, your voice. Your voice starts off as air that's in your lungs. As it's pushed out through your vocal cords, your vocal cords vibrate, creating waves of pressure. Those pressure waves travel through the air until they reach someone's ear and interpret that pressure as the sound of your voice. So how do we measure sound pressure? We measure it in decibels. So here's a nice scale illustrating the range of decibels from the threshold of human hearing all the way up to permanently damaging your ear from experiencing too much sound pressure. So now that we know what sound is and how we measure it, how do we use it in a multimedia project? Well, there's a variety of ways to use sound elements. First, you have to choose what type you're going to use, whether that's music, sound effects, or voiceover or dialogue, and then how you're going to use it. So one way you might use it is to alert your audience. Uh, a good example might be when you sit down to write a term paper and then you go to close Microsoft Word and suddenly your computer beeps at you, alerting you to the fact that you didn't save your project yet and you're going to lose it if you insist on closing Word. Another way to use it is to establish mood. Music is a great way to establish an emotional connection with your audience. Just take a look at the old iPod commercial and that young gentleman experiencing his music. And finally, information. Voiceover and dialogue are great ways to directly communicate information to your audience without forcing them to read something that's on your screen. Now here's where I like to give a pro tip for young multimedia developers. Um, what I've seen with students new to multimedia, they tend to focus on images and animation. And that's very understandable because humans are very visual creatures. Um, but some of the best multimedia pieces I've seen from students really incorporate sound well into their projects. All too often it's left as uh, an afterthought that's integrated the last hour of the project before turning it in. Students that think about sound from the beginning tend to make very, very good projects. Um, so be thinking about sound when you're working on your multimedia projects. So let's talk about digital sound. So here's a nice graph that represents uh, sound in the real world is illustrated by that purple wave and sound as we construct it digitally. So that purple wave form, there's too much information for us to reproduce it perfectly in a computer. So what we do is we sample portions of that wave form. Certain points and reproduce the wave form up to a point. You'll notice right here we lose some information as a result of sampling, right? And the rest it's pretty close. It's not too bad until we get to the end and then we lose some more information here. And this is a result of the sampling rate. Obviously with this example the sampling rate is too low as we're losing some information so we'd have to increase that sampling rate. So what are some of the sampling rates? Well sampling rates are measured in Hertz. So one hertz equals one cycle per second. Um, some example sampling rates on a telephone, I'm not talking about a smartphone, they probably have a little higher sampling rate, but the old landline phones that your parents and grandparents had, um, they tend to sample at 11 kilohertz. A kilohertz is 1,000 hertz. So a telephone is 11,000 pieces of data, 11,000 samples per second. And that's a lot of data. Radio, it doubles it, 22 kilohertz. And CDs double it again, 44 kilohertz. 44,000 pieces of data per second. So this brings us back to a topic I've mentioned in other videos, and that's the fundamental problem of multimedia, which is balancing asset quality with file size. So this sampling rate is a good example of where you can uh, have a little bit of play between a really high quality recording, you could always record at CD levels, 44 kilohertz, um, but if it's just the human voice, do you really need that much quality? Um, might 11 kilohertz do it? Um, so obviously the higher the sampling rate, the larger the file size. So finding a balance between a really good quality recording and a reasonable file size is often managed through the sampling rate. Okay, so other properties of sound, amplitude. Amplitude is the height of the sound wave. 
So here's an example sound wave in green, and you can see the amplitude slowly increasing. On the far left, we have no height at all, so that would be a muted sound. In the middle, you can see sort of an average sound height, so we have uh, medium volume until you get all the way to the end where you got maximum height or maximum amplitude, which will give us our loudest volume. Another way that we can look at waveforms is their frequency. So here's a variety of waveforms. Uh, you'll notice the red waveform has a frequency of four. You can see four dots in one second. So that's sort of the peaks and valleys, how frequently they appear. The purple waveform at the bottom has about a frequency of 15. Um, so it's a much higher pitch than the red waveform. It's also important to note with all of these waveforms, the amplitude is the same. So volume-wise, they all sound the same, um, but because of their different frequencies, the red waveform is a very, very deep sound compared to the purple waveform, which would be a very high-pitched sound due to the frequency. So we can tell a lot about a waveform just by looking at the amplitude and the frequency of the waveform. So finally, what kind of file formats are we working with this semester? Um, there's three major formats we deal with. The first is Microsoft Waveform. This is a straight recording of audio. There's no compression, no loss of data at all, no loss of quality, but again, uh, you're going to have the largest possible file size. The same with the audio interchange file format, the AIFF. So both of these, there's no compression, but it gets very, very high quality um, audio. MP3, which is very popular, uh, file format is a lossy compression. If you remember from our uh, talk on raster graphics, lossy versus lossless comp compression, lossy compression you lose a little bit of the quality. So there's a little bit of sacrifice in terms of audio quality in order to reduce the file size, which is one of the, the big benefits of using the MP3 format. So that's it for this lecture. I'll see you guys in the next one.